Witamy Państwa w nowym 2019 roku. Elżbieta Kujbida. Wacław Kujbida. W pierwszym styczniowym programie Pauli Rzewiu przygotowaliśmy dla Państwa dwie ważne rozmowy przed naszą kamerą. Powróćmy raz jeszcze do roku 2018. Najpierw przypomnimy wydarzenie, jakie miało miejsce w Ottawie pod koniec ubiegłego roku. Rozmowa z Terry Tangazian, która w Ottawie prezentowała działalność oraz książki swojej firmy Aquila Polonica Publishing, powstałego w roku 2005 wydawnictwa, którego jest współzałożycielem. Firmy, której działalność poświęcona jest wyłącznie angielskojęzycznym publikacjom książek, poświęconych propagowaniu historii i wydarzeń II wojny światowej, związanych z Polską i Polakami. Promowaniem tej prawdziwej historii o okupacji Polski przez Niemców, o polskich bohaterach podziemia, o walczących w bitwie o Anglię lotnikach polskich. Wydawnictwo Aquila Polonica Publishing niestrudzenie od lat promuje na świecie prawdziwą historię wojennej i powojennej Polski. A przecież Tery Tangazjan nie jest wcale Polką i pochodzi z ormiańskiej rodziny. The question I, I get almost every time is why am I publishing the Polish World War II experience? I'm not Polish. Actually, my background is Armenian, all four grandparents. And I came to the Polish story actually in a sense by accident because I, was re I used to practice law in Los Angeles. I did film finance work, burned out doing that. Thought I wanted to be a film producer, did a film, didn't love it enough, but I started doing, uh, writing a novel with a World War II backstory, and I had an American fighter pilot character, and somewhere I'd heard about the Polish fighter pilots being these amazing pilots. So I thought, well, that would be kind of interesting. Maybe I'll have one character be a Polish fighter pilot, and I didn't know anything else about it. So I went down to UCLA, and I started reading about Poland in World War II. And I was quickly hooked by the heroism of the Poles and the fact that I knew none of this story. The story is amazing. All I had ever heard about Poland was the Holocaust. I had no idea that there was a huge other piece of the story that's been missing from the, the Allied narrative of World War II. And one step led to another, and I uh, eventually decided to form a publishing company to get this amazing story out into the public. And what I learned about why it wasn't known is because it was intentionally suppressed and distorted by the communists after the war in order to control, to help control Poland, um, both internally and also in the international sphere to marginalize and discredit the Poles who had fought so hard for independence. So there's an element of justice, of injustice that needs to be righted here. And, and so part of what I'm, I feel like I'm doing is saying, look, here's this amazing story. It happened. The Poles were our allies. They were our most stalwart allies from the beginning of the war till the end. And they deserve to have their story be known and, and be integrated into the allied narrative of World War II. Part of my view of the heroism of the Poles is actually not just the superheroes, the pilots. Those are easy heroes, okay? Um, but the resistance, the underground, the fact that under the worst occupation in all of occupied Europe, the Polish underground, the Poles ran the largest non-communist resistance operation in Europe that provided military intelligence to the Allies, that, that told the Allies about German atrocities, including the Holocaust. The fact that um, the average life of a Polish underground member could be measured in months, but they never lacked for volunteers. Poles, they just have heart. They have a heart and they, they love uh, and, and care about uh, freedom and liberation and um, uh, the higher, higher elements, you know, honor and integrity. By and large, I, you know, obviously not everybody, but by and large, I think as a people, as a culture, those things are really valued and they're honored and, and carried out, uh, certainly in, in, the, in the World War II experience. Poles 
Those were victims. Yes, they were victims. Um, as were many, many people. And, and I, you know, I think I tend to come at this, I hope, from a more positive point of view. You can't discount the fact that there was horrible, horrible suffering, um, uh, incredible traumatic experiences on all sides. But in a sense, although it took 70 years, 50 years, uh, in the sense, um, Poland, Poland uh, uh, triumphed in the end um, through all of the turmoil and all of the heartbreak and all of the trauma. And, and I think that's where I'd like uh, to keep a focus, to keep a focus on the, the positive side instead of reliving the trauma and, and, and suffering. We published our first book in 2009. It was The Mermaid and the Messerschmitt. I chose that book because it's about the first six months of the war, and we published it in September 2009 on the 70th anniversary of World War II. And it is an unusual book because it's a uh, working mother's point of view, a civilian working mother. And she talks about, and she's an excellent writer. Um, and she talked about the first six months of the war. She had two little children. Her husband was a Polish diplomat. He was posted in the U.S. She had graduated from Vassar College in the United States and was um, a career woman, actually. Uh, amazing book. We are a small independent publisher, so um, I don't publish a lot of books, but basically one or two a year. And we've got now nine or ten titles out. But we just released uh, our newest uh, release, and it's called Fighting Auschwitz, the Resistance Movement in the Concentration Camp. This is a new edition of a classic book by Joseph Garlinsky that's been out of print for over 40 years. And we have a new uh, introduction by Professor Antony Polonsky, who calls it the definitive study of the topic of resistance in Auschwitz. So we're very proud of that book, and I'm very excited to have it uh, added to our list as actually a companion book to one of our best-selling books, which is the Auschwitz Volunteer, Beyond Bravery. And that is uh, the first time that Witold Pilecki's most comprehensive report about his Auschwitz mission, his undercover mission at Auschwitz, has been translated and published in English. And we're extremely proud of that book. We got an amazing review in the New York Times Sunday Book Review. The Wall Street Journal called it one of the five best books on wartime secret missions. Another one of our actually best-selling books is 303 Squadron. This is about the legendary Polish fighter squadron that was the highest scoring allied fighter squadron in the Battle of Britain. And we um, negotiated with, the, the author was Arkady Fiedler, we negotiated with his son who asked us to do a new translation. And uh, in the new translation we identified the Polish pilots for the first time in English. The book was written in Polish during the Battle of Britain and translated into English in 1942, but at that time, the, pilots, the, the book used only pseudonyms for the pilots because, in order to protect their families who were still in German-occupied Poland. So um, we're very excited. This is a, it's a wonderful book and, uh, you know, certainly, uh, definitely worth reading. And it's a classic in Poland. And that book actually won a gold award for, uh, in history, as a, as a history book, by the Independent Book Publishers Association. It was the best history book in the year it came out. So we're very proud of that. Actually, all of our books to date have won one or more awards. Um, so we're really very proud of what we do. And when I'm doing our books, I really try to make them accessible to an American or Western audience. So what that means is, uh, first of all, design, interior design, uh, clean style, a lot of white space. We um, use a lot of photographs, and I often spend as much time researching and licensing photographs as we do working with the text of a book. Um, in one of our books, I did something even more revolutionary, I think, which was, as far as I know, the first time we included 11 short videos um, that we created from historical uh, film and license material that we found mostly in the National Archives in Washington, D.C., and, and licensed. And they're uploaded to YouTube, but they're private on YouTube. You can access them in the book we have for each video. We have a little QR code, which is one of those little square barcodes. So you can take your smartphone, if you have a QR code reader, run it over the barcode and go straight to the video, which we thought would appeal to young people. 
In addition, we also have the URL, so you can just type it into your browser. That book, we won both the Silver Award for Autobiography and Memoir and a Gold Award for Interior Design because of the way we integrated the multimedia element into the, into the book.